Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our 15 minutes podcast. I want to ask for your indulgence. The please if you are not if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I want you to subscribe now. You will see subscription press on the subscription and then you will see a bell press on the bell and then you are already a subscriber what does that cost you nothing it does not cost you anything what it does is very simple every time the podcast is ready a notification is sent into your handset i know you are busy you have so many things doing but you see once you are back and your phone is off you will be notified that podcast from David Nuga is ready. And then you can follow us in this series as we help to build your faith in Christ. Praise the Lord. Now today, I this Monday podcast, I want to start us on a series of teaching which I call Unbelief is an Enemy. Unbelief is an enemy and um, we're going to be using two scriptures as background scripture which is uh, Matthew 17 14 to 21 the apostles experience and then then Jesus Christ personal experience himself but I'm going to start with the experience of the Lord Jesus and then um, we're going to be building further with the apostles experience so that we'll be able to see how to reaffirm how unbelief comes and what is unbelief and how to actually successfully deal with unbelief because the truth is this if you don't deal with unbelief unbelief will deal with you 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 in this series you are going to be seeing that unbelief is actually more than what you know unbelief to be and that's why i'm going to be taking my time and we're going to be following each other gently and then god is going to help us to build this understanding okay i'm going to be reading from mark 6 1 to 6 and uh, the bible says and he went out from tents and came into his own country i wanted to know that word his own country that is very important that is very important he came to his own country that's very important his own country and uh, his disciples follow him and when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the church now i that's my own paraphrase i call the synagogue church and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence have this man? But they call Jesus Christ this man. They call Jesus Christ this man. Uh, remember, it was his own country. So they're supposed to know him by name. But they call him this man. These things. And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works, mighty works, are wrought by his hands? Now this is the testimony of the people in Jesus Christ's own country. Hallelujah. Now look at the next statement. After they're calling him this man, the next statement is that is not this the carpenter. Now they didn't say is not this the son of the carpenter, but they say is not this the carpenter, meaning that Jesus' vocation was carpentry because his father is a carpenter hallelujah so the people know him to be a carpenter they don't they do not recognize him as a preacher they do not recognize him as jesus they do not recognize him as messiah but you know what they only recognize him as a carpenter even though he's preaching now they still recognize him as a carpenter 
to every other person Jesus Christ could be a miracle worker but to the people in his hometown he's a carpenter he's a carpenter now the son of Mary the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us so meaning that they know Jesus by name but they chose to call him this man now you see I'm teaching on the subject unbelief is an enemy unbelief is an enemy and they were offended at him wonderful wonderful now they've done a background check on Jesus they know the names of all his brothers they know his sister they know his vocation now what the God at the end of all this their research all this their research what the God after all this their research is that they became offended now ordinarily you expect that Jesus should be offended now they're the one that went to do background check on Jesus and at the end of the day they, they became they became you see that is the side of unbelief that you have not been taught that you have not been taught I as we go in the series I'm going to show you and I'm going to prove it to you that unbelief is an event unbelief is an event it's an event and when you come to recognize that unbelief is an event you come back to discover that you can never preach away unbelief because it's an event unbelief is a mountain I will show us in this series now that's why you need to follow me very closely in the series and then when you understand it you understand why you cannot maximize the anointing of people that God has sent to your life in your life let's move on and uh, I and they were offended in him they were offended in him but Jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own king and in his own house did you see what we said he came to his own country and he could dare do no mighty works now the, the challenge is not with Jesus because the people themselves said earlier they said from whence are this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works were wrought by his hands did you see that so mighty works was wrought by the hands of Jesus the people know it they know what happened at Capernaum if you read Luke chapter 4 they know what happened they told him what we heard and what we saw happen in Capernaum do here So the problem is not if Jesus can do mighty works or not. He could do mighty works. But in this case, he could not do it. Could that be responsible for why your pastor has not been able to do mighty works in your life? Yes. And I'm gonna I'm, and that's what this series is all about. Could, you be, could that be the reason why the mighty works you need to overcome your challenges in life, to overcome your health challenge in life, has not happened? Yes. 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 By stripe you are here. There's no question about it. It is an already settled issue. By stripe you are here. But why you have not been able to experience the healing is the unbelief. He's an enemy. 
So I'm going to, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm showing us how unbelief is built, and I'm going to show us how you can deal with unbelief. If you don't deal with unbelief, unbelief will deal with you. And unbelief can keep you sick, if not kill you in life. So the people know that Jesus Christ did mighty works. They said it themselves. But here is Jesus, here they are, and Jesus couldn't do the mighty works. And the details that the scriptures gave to us is vital. They have done a background check on Jesus. The background check on Jesus did not make them to call Jesus by Jesus because they know the meaning of the word Jesus. They know the meaning of the word Jesus. So they won't call, they won't use that name Jesus. But do you know what? But they know all the names of the members of Jesus Christ's family and they call those ones by name. They say James, Joseph, and Judah, and Simon. They call them by name, but they won't call Jesus by name. They won't call Jesus by name. The Bible says, And he could dare do no mighty work, save that he lay hands upon a few sick folk and heal them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. Did you get that? because of their unbelief and it was and it went around about the villages teaching because of their unbelief so the reason why your pastor has not been able to do mighty works in your life is because of unbelief the reason why mighty works that you needed to deal with the mighty sickness in your life it's because of your unbelief. It's because of your unbelief. The reason why the, 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 the mighty works have not been able to deal with the mighty situation in your life is because of your unbelief. But unfortunately, many people don't know how unbelief comes. So if you don't know how unbelief comes, you can't prevent it. Now that is, that is, that is the big problem. Because the truth is that you can't deal with what you don't even know that is there in the first place. As a matter of fact, these people want to see what they heard happen in Capernaum. In Luke chapter 4, they say, what we heard happen in Capernaum, do also here in your own country. Do it also here in your own country. And do you know what? Jesus couldn't do it because of their unbelief. That's what makes the difference between them and the people of Capernaum. But because they don't know. So they couldn't experience mighty works. The Bible said all that Jesus did was, was save that he lay his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. So if he lay hands on few sick folk, it means that those sickness were not mighty works. So people were, so they were not mighty, yes, they were not mighty works. So they couldn't have been mighty sickness. So people with mighty sickness remain. Now that is why many people are still remaining with mighty sickness. Because of unbelief. But do you know what? I'm going to show you how unbelief comes. And how you can deal with unbelief. How unbelief comes and how you can deal with unbelief. And if you don't deal with unbelief, unbelief will deal with you and keep you in this mighty sickness or in this mighty situation. It's not because your pastor is not mighty. The question is not whether Jesus Christ is mighty or not. Jesus is mighty. The Bible said that, the people said ah, that all these mighty works were wrought by thee. They know that mighty works were wrought by Jesus. But they could not experience it. Why? Because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. But like I said, I'm going to be showing you that unbelief is an event and you cannot preach away unbelief. So, I'm out of time right now. So, in our When a Day podcast, we begin to build further on the series of teaching which we call Unbelief is an Enemy. God bless you from me here. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. I will see you in our Wednesday podcast.